sometimes you go on a trip, take a bunch of photos, film a bunch of stuff and think, man, these photos are going to be sick. I can't wait to post them. Then you get back from the trip and get sucked right back into work and the files slowly die on your hard drive, never to see the light of day again. And that kind of happened with this trip. So today I'm heading deep into the archives and I'm dusting off these gosh darn mp4 files to make them into a new mp4 file for you to watch. Here are two weeks of photography in France during the height of summer. Just like every good trip, this one starts off with about 14 hours sitting in a car being bored out of your mind, which I am now going to show you in real time. Oh look, we arrived. Wow, that was a really quick 14 hours. Dreaming and doing it again yeah. Thinking about the way we talk Till the morning, yeah I'm wanting more Cause when I see you This water Tastes like the sweetest wine November Feels like the summer night Dark brown hair Moving from side to side Never felt so alive I used my iPhone a lot to take photos during the first couple days because when I went to the beach to have a swim I didn't really feel like bringing over 3 grand in camera gear and leaving it sitting on the beach while I was in the ocean. Not to mention the risk of it getting buried on accident during a furious sandcastle building session. But to be honest I'm really happy with these images I was able to get out of the iPhone and it was broad daylight in summer so for a lot of these using my proper camera wouldn't really have made a big difference anyways. Of course I also brought a big boy camera, my Sony a7 IV, but I packed very light for this trip. All I brought was a tripod, the a7 IV and my trusty Tamron 28-75 f2.8. To be honest, if it comes down to it, this combo is all I need. It feels so surreal to look at all this footage from summer and then realize it's like 8 degrees Celsius outside and it's pouring rain, man. I can't wait for the weather to get better. <laughs> it might look like all I was doing in these first couple of days was eating, sitting on the beach and drinking wine. And that's true, <laughs> but after two days or so I realized I really need to work on my bachelor thesis. So I actually spent a lot of time on this trip in front of my laptop staring at code or some research papers, but at least I was doing it with a phenomenal view and breaks in between where I could go for a swim. Pro tip, if you're gonna be stressed, be stressed somewhere where there's a beach. <laughs> I don't wanna waste no time. After a few more days of stacking sunburns like photoshop layers, we headed to Saint-Tropez for a little day trip and I was super excited to get some street photography in. Also this was the moment I realized this is a real city and not a fictional town made up by DJ Antoine and Timati for the 2009 hit single Welcome to Saint-Tropez. Right out the gate I got one of my best shots of the day, but I couldn't really decide on how to edit this one. Walking around there were a lot of these little touristy stores selling postcards. This one had a cat on it driving a boat through the harbor, but for some reason the cat looks really sad. Okay that's beside the point, I'm getting distracted. What I meant to show you is that behind the boat cat there is a really nice view of the harbor with the town center in the background and I really wanted to find that vantage point. Wanna roll over Cause you're already here closer My lover and a friend Let the credits roll in
Walking a bit further, I found this really nice scene with this bridge, but I wasn't that happy with the composition, so I cropped it down for a super wide aspect ratio, which really saved this shot in my opinion. This has to be one of my favorite shots of the day, or maybe even the entire trip. It didn't take very long to find the big old wall that encapsulates the harbor from where I could get the shot of the town center I was looking for. There was just one problem. Either the town shrunk since they made those postcards, or the people got richer, <laughs> because the entire town was dwarfed by these ginormous yachts. Those are freaking four-story buildings in the background, and they look tiny next to the boats. I think at this point the wall of yachts is a better defense mechanism for this town than the actual wall I was standing on. I did get one really good shot of these two modest sailing boats though, which I probably can't afford either. <laughs> I realized there wasn't a single boat in this harbor I could afford. I tried making a deal with the cat from the postcard to buy his boat, but he said, and I quote, I need it for work. Those postcards don't make themselves. You know what else doesn't make itself? These videos. <laughs> I don't have any sponsors or anything, but if you want to support me so I can keep this channel alive and you like how the images in this video are looking, go check out my Lightroom presets. Every single one of the images in this video is edited with my Analog Vibes or Disposable Vibes Lightroom preset pack. If you want to get that dreamy film look or a clean street photography look for your photos, no matter what camera you're using, then go check out the link down below where you can get a hefty discount on a bundle with both preset packs. After giving up on my failed postcard plan, we continued walking through the town and I have to say I got some pretty good shots. I saw this alleyway that looked really cool with this passage going through the house leading to the beach, but the scene was a bit too busy, so I waited around a bit more. And it paid off. This is the shot I ended up with. This has to be the best shot of the day in my opinion. The stars really aligned on this one, DJ Antoine being one of them. By the way, I just took a look at the lyrics and realized that in Timatis and DJ Antoine's 2009 hit single, Welcome to Saint Tropez, they were probably singing about photography. Take a look at this. We make money, money we spend in. So all the money he makes, he spends it on gear again. That sounds like me. Spending money in a large amount. Oh yeah, this is definitely about photography. Haters keep hating. Well, yeah, at least on my channel they do. <laughs> Get mad brain in my very fast car. He's late for the shoot and he's like mentally going through the shot list and that's why he feels like he's going mad. Too much money in the bank account. Oh no, he lost me there, guys. This can't be about photography. Anyways, we then headed towards the citadel located on a hill in the city. On the way there, I found this really nice Porsche 911 next to a whole bunch of flowers. This was a nice car, but it had nothing on this little blue guy. We reached the citadel after what felt like 1 million steps in the heat. In reality, I think it was maybe 50. For some reason there was a peacock there and now I know what baby peacocks look like. I don't know what to do with that information and you probably don't know either. Having enough of the heat we called it a day and I have this weird feeling that the video is about to cut to the time when we... Two days later we visited a nearby town that was further in the mountains. It was already the evening and it was relatively dark, which was unfortunate because I would have loved to see this town during daylight. This town has exactly one thing going for it. They seem to have filled it to the brim with purple flowers and not gonna lie, it looks sick.
This is definitely my favorite shot from this town. First of all, that streetlight looks like it's out of a Disney movie. And secondly, the way it's engulfed in flowers while giving off soft light, I'm really happy with how this shot turned out. One thing that was quite unfortunate though, there wasn't a lot going on in this town. I kept waiting for people to come by, so I had a subject to incorporate into the scene, but there were so few people walking around. Street photography without people is like bread without the can. After walking around some more we found this giant sign with the town's name on it and I just want some credit that it literally has mimosas in the name and I didn't make a single joke about that. On this day we headed to something like a national park, no it's not a, it's not a national park, what's like one level below a national park? A nature sanctuary? I don't know, let's go with that. <laughs> On the way there we had a little detour and headed up a mountain where there was supposed to be a great view. The view was nice but this was peak midday lighting and the photos really didn't turn out that well. This spot would have been a lot better for sunset. I got like 100 very similar shots from different angles of this one tree at the foot of this cliff. This is probably the best one of the bunch and I think it turned out fine but the midday lighting definitely made this a bit more difficult. You know what else made this trip difficult? My absolute inability to speak any coherent French despite literally having had French in school for a total of 4 years and having a French girlfriend so yeah I'm just an idiot apparently. <laughs> UK, UK, tell me a damn thing. I'm lost, at least it's a daydream. I turn into a hole. My days don't stop, stop till my legs weak. My heart is beating like crazy, does it all to a tune of its own. I think I might have even had more fun photographing some of the buildings that were sprinkled into this landscape than the actual nature. But while going back and re-editing some of these photos half a year later, I realized that these images are the perfect testing ground for a new preset pack I'm currently working on, aiming to replicate those abstract infrared film colors. For the last leg of this trip, we left the south of France behind us for a couple more days in the French countryside. After 7 hours of sitting in the car once again, with Zelda breathing on me for 6.5 of those, we arrived in probably the most painterly place I have ever seen. Like seriously, everything in this area looked like it's straight out of a painting, it's crazy. It almost made me want to be a mildly alcoholic poet in the 1800s. You know why it took him 40 years to complete that book? Not because he worked especially hard on it, no. He was busy drinking two bottles of wine a day. <laughs> yeah sure, that's his life's work and it's a classic.
Most of my time here was spent working on my bachelor thesis to be honest, but the problem was the Wi-Fi was pretty much unusable and cell reception was really bad as well. So what my girlfriend, who also had to study, ended up doing was propping up her phone by the open window which she was using as a Wi-Fi hotspot for her laptop and that seemed to work pretty well, so I wanted to put my phone next to hers, but while I was trying to do that I suddenly just hear the sound of something sliding down the tiles of the roof. Yeah, I <laughs> I accidentally yeeted her phone out the window and it was then sitting in the gutter which we could not reach. Believe me, we tried. Also, this gutter was two stories up and we didn't have a ladder. <laughs> the next day we fortunately saw that the house across the street from our Airbnb had roofers working on it and we asked one of the guys if he could come help us with the big ladder that they were using and luckily we then finally were able to retrieve the phone but man, never a boring day in my life. <laughs> On the last evening of this trip we had a phenomenal sunset and we headed to a nearby field where I also ended up getting my favorite shot from the entire trip. There was a composition here I had found a few days earlier with a big tree at the end of this road, but when I had first seen it I had already missed the good light unfortunately. This time around I was at the right place at the right time though, and right before pressing the shutter I heard one last DJ Antoine line. Wah, party now. <laughs> 